Hello, welcome to the Loney Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Loney. In this episode, I brought in regular Risk 11, and eventually, in a few minutes, Eric Taylor. As for our guest, returning from the first season, he's from Montreal, he's a communication coach and YouTuber. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Brendan Kumarasamy. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Good Anytime. Problem. So, how's life? Life has been good. I remember the last time we did this interview, but but I, I believe... Do you guys know what year it was, actually? What month we did it? I think it was January 2021. So it's like the first week or two when I, when my podcast first launched. Ah, uh, gotcha. Congrats on the success. But yeah, for, for me, the last two years have been pretty amazing. You know, you had met me. I think I was just fresh from quitting corporate. I was probably six months into entrepreneurship. And and now we're two years later, and things have been nuts. I mean, I've guested on hundreds of podcasts. The business grew a lot. YouTube channel exploded. So yeah, I'm super grateful. You can accomplish a lot in a, in a little bit of time if you really focus on what you want to do, like both of you have done with the podcast. So congrats on that. Thanks. So, so how's how's your success since the last time you've you've been on here? Yeah, I would say the success has been in a, in a lot of different areas. One, when you had met me the first time, Master Talk was still just getting started as a business because I'd started it in January of 2019, but I went full time in June of 2021. So the first time that we had the conversation, I was still in my corporate job at IBM, kind of balancing both my work and my business. And then six months after we, we did our interview, I decided to quit my corporate job so that I could pursue Master Talk full time. And it's been it's been a crazy journey since then. So obviously the first three months was really stressful. But then after that, I figured out how to make it work. Our client base grew. I started doing really well financially. And today I, I spend 100% of my time doing something that I love. So I, I don't think there's a greater success than that for sure. Okay, great. Amazing. Well, uh, another Another one of our co-hosts and regulars has arrived, Eric Taylor. Yeah, sorry, my bad. For some reason, it wasn't letting me join from the app. I just upped it. I just... It's called, it's called Spotify for Podcasters. Yeah, yeah. I noticed it. They must have... Yeah. I, I think... I think I, did, I tried to do the airdrop thing when I tried to bring Brandon on, but uh, yeah, that's how it happened. Hmm. It's, so they've it's changed nothing... the name. That's no, they haven't changed the name. It's just I've... Try trying to experiment with different ways to exchange the joining link and podcasters Spotify whatever was like what is the link to access this? No, I mean when... like the app is actually they've actually changed the name of the app. Wait, really? Yeah. I'll send you a oh. screenshot. Like, oh my god, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. It looks I pretty. Think I just noticed pretty... that. It looks, looks a lot nicer. Spot. Yeah. Look. Yeah. It look. I mean. Okay. It's good branding. Okay. So, uh, uh, so, what do you guys want to dive into? So, I was asked. So, Risk, do you have a question for Brandon? Uh, I'm sure I'll come to something. Okay. Eric, anything you want to dive into? You there? Don't worry, you'll, you'll be back. Oh, yeah, we're wondering where you are. <laughs> oh, 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 sorry. I didn't know you. I thought you, I didn't know you were talking to me. Uh, so, like, uh, did Brendan already tell you guys about himself? <laughs> yeah. So we did the intro. We were catching up with from the last time Brendan appeared on here, talking about master talks and whatever. Uh, do you think you have any questions on relates to that? About uh, what? Do Do you no. have any questions for Brendan in terms of master talk, whatever? Uh, no, no. I... Okay. <laughs> So anyway, so in ter- so for all the listen- the new listeners that don't know who you are, Brendan, uh, explain more about Master Talks, like how it gets started, what it do, and what are your future plans with it? For sure, Jamie, happy to do that. So, so Master Talks started when I was in college. I went to university, and I went to business school to be an accountant, funny enough. And that's what I studied in. But when I was doing my accounting degree, I started doing these things called case competitions. Think of it like professional sports, but for nerds. So uh, other guys my age were playing rugby or soccer or football or any other sport. I wasn't really into any of that. I did professional presentations competitively, and that's how I learned how to speak. 
But then as I got older, I started coaching a bunch of students on how to communicate ideas because I felt, oh, wait a second, nobody's really helping them. And then I had the idea for the YouTube channel Master Talk because I thought, oh, wait a second, like everything that I'm sharing with them isn't really available for free on the internet. So I started making videos. I called it Master Talk. And then a few years later, turned to something I never could have imagined. Fabulous. Yep. Just, just as great as it was in the first season. <laughs> I've, I've definitely gotten a lot better at interviewing since since last time. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, can I feel like we've gotten sure. better over time as well, if I'm being honest. Yeah. In some aspects. Uh, so yeah, tell us what you want, where you want to go next, Jamie. You're the one you're running this okay. podcast. <laughs> so, it, another question is, where do you see yourself twenty years from now? Yeah, that's a great question, Jamie. Yeah. I would say for me, you know, I'll be 46 in 20 years. I, I think where I'll start with is, you know, I'm super grateful. I've already, I've already achieved a lot of success really early. So that's probably one big thing. But the other piece is my end game is to make communication available for everyone for free. That's really the goal of what I do. So I think the next Elon Musk is like a seven-year-old girl who can't really afford a communication coach. So for me, that looks like how do I Good become... Point. Yeah, how do I become this generation's Dale Carnegie? That's really the the goal that I've outlined for myself. And of course, in 20 years, I'll have a family and, and all of that fun stuff too. But I would say the, the big dream for me is how do I get to a place in my life where every human being can grow up knowing how to communicate ideas effectively? And that's going to be through a multitude of ways. Podcasts is one of them. Another one's going to be my social media now that my YouTube has, has grown significantly since last time and all that fun stuff is how do we keep growing and then scaling out the client base too? Hmm. Okay. I'm, I'm sure it'd be Fabulous. So is there any other ways that you've been exploring about how to like reach your reach a new audience and that? Yeah, for sure. Risk. Short from content. You got it. So, so before, when I did the interview the first time with you guys in 2021, I was mostly just creating content on one platform. So I was just focused on YouTube and being successful there but now that the youtube channel has grown I've, I've definitely expanded to other areas so now we're doing daily posts on linkedin we're posting daily on instagram now we're posting daily on tiktok so now it's about how do we scale that more so one of my goals this year is to start posting four or five times a day on instagram so i can really take advantage of the growth that's coming my way and i also want to post four to five times daily on youtube too mostly for youtube shorts so that's where I'm seeing a lot of the opportunity right now. And that's where I'm focusing a lot of my time and, and effort on. But yeah, I transitioned to short form a long, a while, uh, probably six months ago. But I'm still posting long form every week on YouTube as usual. Sweet. Yeah, we've been experimenting with like short form, like long form, like seminar type things. What, what, what would we class what we do on spaces? Well, basically what we do in our spaces is like we talk about – how society is functioning right now and different like different news stories and well we just we just talk about a lot of other stuff most of the time but when we do talk about stuff on twitter spaces we do talk about we do address like different issues that are going on in our lives right now and ways how we could actually tackle these issues and make the world a better place for all of us you personally believe that spaces might not be in the short term a good thing but in the long term when elon rebuilds twitter and makes it into a like a, a very very important app we think it would probably be beneficial to build build a presence on twitter that's what we've been doing over the past couple months yeah that's interesting guys you know uh, what i would say is twitter i think is a great platform i think the reason i'm not too active on it was because i've had a lot of experience with audio rooms i was pretty big on clubhouse few years ago when it was yeah, out i remember but, that yeah but the problem with clubhouse is like when you when you create content that's synchronous so synchronous just means like you have to be there in the moment that the content is being created it's really difficult to scale that because not everybody can tune in at the same time whereas with the podcast which is or a youtube channel which is asynchronous you can just jump on that youtube channel or start listening whenever you want so because and the other piece is a lot of when Clubhouse got started, I think the reason why it became so big was because people didn't have any other option. You couldn't go outside because of COVID. You couldn't do anything. So you had to stay 
indoors and it was the only way of kind of building relationships and connection with people so that's why i think clubhouse was interesting but it's also for that reason why it kind of it kind of degraded in user base and i think the same thing will happen in spaces mm, it's interesting yeah, yeah um, it could be you know, like we that. Did, yeah you know we just decided to stop doing youtube because well it kept changing plus we didn't Plus, we didn't really see it. We used to do video content on YouTube, but it's like we just didn't see it. At some point, we just didn't see a point of doing it anymore because, well, you know, we had an old teammate and, like, you know, she was busy a lot. So, like, we just decided to stick with spaces. And audio audio form content, if I'm being honest. Like, we streamed ourselves back to what we're good at, core app, yeah. podcasts. We Love realized it, we, we, weren't be- we weren't big enough to basically use a YouTube channel, have a YouTube channel, and we basically just stripped ourselves back to doing spaces and audio form content. Yeah, I mean, we, have, we, we have considered like you know doing uh you know shorts, but like you know we're we're still kind of talking about that. Yeah, because like you know shorts, it, shorts is where it's at for the most part. I can't. Oh I yeah, side of it's better to go with real Instagram reels, TikTok, or YouTube shorts. The answer well, is to create dominant. the same content and post it on all three platforms. Good that's point. What you do. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's what I that's what I've been doing with a lot of my videos. I post on every other platforms that are possible, even if it's not that big. At least I can get somewhat of attraction and following on said other platform, despite not being big. It could be an attraction or reach a certain demographic that may not happen on other big platforms. Thing with YouTube is, I feel like they've got made a lot of competition, and that's something that I think. It's probably plagued YouTube for a while. Like they're so they're so good at what they do, and I think every company needs competition. In my view, like if you got like if it wasn't for like my, Apple having Microsoft push them forward, or Mac or App or Microsoft having App push them forward, or I don't think companies would be as big as what they have. It's like kind of like fighting in that you have your, your own little rivalry <laughs> or competition. <laughs> Does YouTube really have competition? No, that's the thing. In short form video and YouTube, no, not really. Closest thing would probably be Twitch, wouldn't it? Or it used to be. No, not. I'm pretty sure that's not competition. That's the whole separate thing. The only thing I, the only platform I can really think about is Rumble, but like that's about it. I can't really think of anything else. Yeah. Well, I, th- I think for me, historically, the pl- long form content platforms I've could think of is Vimeo and Daily Motion. I don't think you would oh, know what any of those two emotion, things are. Man, that's a freaking, that's a story that brings me back. Same with Vimeo. Yeah. I mean, I am old. <laughs> I remember Daily Motion. I never really used it, but I remember it. Same with risk Vimeo. Your, risk, your 20, <laughs> risk your 24, you're not old. Yeah. So what well, yeah, at least. <laughs> so, um, so, Brendan, would you rather have an agility of a cat or breathe underwater? The agility of a cat or breathe underwater. I would definitely go with breathe underwater because the agility of a cat isn't that impressive to have as a skill set. They just sit at home and do nothing all day. <laughs> they, can also no, that's fair. they can also land on their feet. Well, yeah, yeah. but how often would that happen? If, you, if a cat just falls from like a five, six story building and just land on the feet, how have to do that? I, 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 don't, I don't know. I have never. I, I don't... So, um, <laughs> why would okay, you try so, it? So, you know, I never. I wouldn't try. Yo, I have a dog. I have two dogs. I'm not going to try that. Like, I, I had two cats. They ran away. All right. <laughs> you know, it was probably for the best, Eric. <laughs> I wasn't going to. I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> please, please, please don't. Please don't. For legal reasons, just don't do it. Okay, yeah. first, okay first off, why, why would I? Why would I be admitting this? If I was gonna try it, I wouldn't even admit it online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good point. That? All right, I have two. I have two dogs. I like dogs better, anyways. I like cats, but you know, dogs are cool. Yeah. A lot of work. Oh, so I, my okay. So I have a question for you. Like, you know, has there ever been a job that you hated? Yeah, when I was younger, I worked at an eco center. So basically, for the for for those who don't know, an eco center is a place where people dump things that they can't, they're not allowed legally to put in a trash can or a recycling bin. So I'll give an example: construction, right? Construction debris. You're not allowed putting that in a garbage can. Uh, toxins. 
So like paints, d things like that. Uh, big batteries. So you can't really put any of that into a, a recycling bin. So you go to an eco center to dump all of this. And I was I was managing the toxic department of all the toxins that people would bring. So yeah, it was a really shit job that paid me 12 bucks an hour. But hey, I paid my education with it, so I took it. <laughs> True. Seriously, twelve bucks an hour? No. That's a terrible pay for such a job. Well, nah, yeah. come on. More than what I get paid now. No, twelve bucks an hour is crazy. It is what it is though? Like it's either I mean, that like, or bro, be no, no, no. homeless. Be. I'm not gonna lie. I think it because I'm from the city. I would expect. I, I objectively expect a little more. Yeah, at least, the city, it, no, the city I would at least. No, I would at least expect fifteen dollars an hour. At least. What's the minimum wage? In America, that's, anyway. That, that, that no. It, okay, so in New York, that's the minimum. That's the minimum wage. But in Carolina, in like places like you know North Carolina, that's a lot. I think most countries should just standard minimum wage. Like in Britain, Honestly, like it's it, it's it's got a start. It's above board standard minimum wage for all of Brit all of England in Britain. I, personally, my last job, I had I got paid twenty dollars an hour, and I'm like, eh. It's a it's a good amount though. But I'm just saying eh, more than what most crazy. people get. Twenty an hour is no, it's, it's more. It's more than what most people get. But I'm like, eh, because it's like you know, about about like a thousand dollars. If it's people complaining over twenty pounds, there's something wrong with society. Yeah, no, I'm not. No, I'm not complaining over it. It was a good amount. It's just that, like, bro, I live in New. I live in New York, so I mean, it's expensive out here. And plus, like you know, where I live, they base your rent off of like what you're getting. So it's like it's not much. You can live off that somewhere else. I think it'd be struggling to live off twenty pound an hour. If I'm being honest, but if they base it, is it doable. off, if they base if they base your rent off of how much you're getting paid, then yeah. True. Uh, anything else you want to ask, Jamie or Eric? Hmm. Oh, okay. Let me what? let me check. Go on. Okay. Uh, if you can travel anywhere in the world, where would it be and why? Uh, I would just travel to Toronto to see my family, honestly. I'm not that big of a traveler. Yeah, I might go to Europe for like a month just to hang out with some people, do some events. But I would say that the most important place that I go to is really to go see my family in Toronto because that's the stuff you can't really replace. So I would just go to Toronto. Not a bad option. Yeah, no, it's not. No, yeah, no, it's not. A, it's not a bad option at all. No, it's uh, yeah, pretty, fabulous. Pretty yeah, no, it's uh, it's wonderful. Fantastic. It's been out. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm just checking something real quick. Okay. Jami, you had a question for him? Yes. <laughs> what is the stupidest joke you've ever heard? What is the stupidest joke I've ever heard? Yeah, I can give you it. So so there's two meatballs in a barbecue, right? And the one of the meatballs goes to the other one, Hey, isn't it hot in here? And the other meatball goes, oh my god, a talking meatball. That's the stupidest joke I've ever heard in my life. Okay, yeah, that, that is very stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you guys joke? Go on, go on. Okay, so why couldn't the kids go see the pirate movie? Because it's rated R. Yeah, pretty much. You know where I got that joke from? SpongeBob SquarePants. Yes, like, I don't know how. Wow, how original. Bravo. I don't, I, I don't know how I still remember that joke. It just stuck with me. No, neither can I. Honest, honestly, it's like it's one of those jokes. I'm like, it's simple. It's good. I'm a t That's exactly what I'm going to tell people when I, you know, when I first meet them. Like, you know, hey, you want to hear a joke? Because it was rated R, you know? Oh, my gosh. Uh, is that the pirate joke? Yeah. Yes, that's, that's the joke, Chris. <laughs> oh, <is it? laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's like a, oh, so I forgot which episode that was. Still a thing. It's still a thing, isn't it? It's still a thing. Is it? Very much. Okay. Well, yeah. it, 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 are, are, are the new shows good? Because I have not watched it in so long. Oh, that I don't know. <laughs> I oh. just it's going strong. I mean, yeah, if, uh, if he's going on strong, it's. I think it should be good as it was a few years ago, kind of, uh, in a way. They should just yeah. really. Personally, they should just had a great run. It, I'll be honest; it should have. Yeah, ended a brilliant in, run. It it would have ended in any year. It should have. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. 
However, they might be actually going for the number one champ, the number one role of being the, the longest running freaking cartoon. Or the longest running 90s show. Like, it was released in 1999. Oh, the year I was born. How nice. Yay. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Hey. Way. A ball of SpongeBob. Nice. <laughs> How old, uh, are you? How old are you, Risk? You're like 25? 24, like 1999. Okay, so you're 24. Cool. I don't know why you yeah. call yourself. I don't know. I mean, like, you know, you're, 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 uh. I feel old. <laughs> but, <sighs> well, you keep you telling yourself that, you may actually feel old. Yeah, Risk. I mean, come on. You're not <laughs> old yet. You haven't became, you haven't became like Elon Musk yet, man. Don't say that. One day. Oh, I'm a big fan of his. <laughs> I respect mm-hmm. everything he freaking does. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to make a shit killing as soon as his company goes massive. Gets massive. <laughs> oh, yes. Be quite the journey. Yeah. So what else do you guys want to dive into? Mm-hmm. So, okay, um, I got a... go, on. Oh, go on, Eric. I got another question. Was there at a point in your life where you felt, com- for instance, like, you know, you just, uh, you know, for instance, yeah, like pretty much was there like what you wanted to do for a career for sure man for sure and by the way i gotta drop in five minutes as well because i got another appointment coming up oh yeah I, i would say for me the point where i felt directionless in life was short lived but i think the reason is because i did a lot of inner work to kind of figure out who i wanted to be like if you had told me at 19 that I was not only going to get my dream job, but I was going to quit it to start a business. I would have thought you're crazy. I was like, first of all, I don't even think I'm going to get the job. And now you're telling me I'm going to get the job and then I'm going to quit the job. That like makes absolutely no sense. So I would say for me, the, the strategy that I teach people that people can take home to the bank is the quality of your life is solely determined by the quality of the questions that you ask yourself about life. So for me, I call them 80, 20 questions. What are the 20% of the questions that lead to 80% of one's clarity in life? And I'll give you one as an example, guys. The question is just this. If you could only accomplish three things in your life and only three, what would you want those three things to be and why? And what happens is that really helps you focus on what you actually want to do in life versus the 70 different things that are spinning in your mind. So that's just an example. I've just asked thousands of these questions to myself. Hmm. Hmm. Fabulous. Great. Nice. Yeah, I like that. All right, you got any questions from Jonas? If you if you had a song for every time you entered the room, what song would that be? Huh, that's a good question. What song would I pick? I like Legendary Lane a lot. So Legendary Lane is, is a pretty good song. So I'd probably I'd probably use that one potentially. It's the final okay. awesome. the uh the song from Revenge of the Sith. Where Anakin and Obi Wan fight. I think that would be an interesting song for an entrance. Oh yeah. How, how, about, how, about, how about you, John? May? What song would you pick? To be honest, I don't have a specific preference, like a role. Only certain, only certain songs in certain situations. Like for one example, Revenge of the Sith, for like something intense, that would be one. Another one would be like classical music, so like somewhere kind of chill. But that in t- in moments of Pure intent, pure tension, or it feels like you're in an action thriller movie, something like action thriller type music. No, no specific preferences, just like generalization on certain situations. Just like adds a little flavor to my life. Personally, think the song from Top Gun Mark, Danger Zone might be. Oh uh, yes, that'll be good. <laughs> Anything else you guys want to touch quickly before it? Just got one more. Sure. Dive in. Okay, this is okay, this is coming from the top of my head. And I've had this a couple of times and got very interesting answers. So between have you ever heard of Banana Friche? Banana Friche? Yeah. Like fridge or Friche? Friche. Never heard of it. I mean, I know what a banana is, but I don't know what a free chase. It's kind of like a mixture between a smoothie and a milkshake. Yeah. But it has banana flavor in it somehow, because it's, yeah. Hmm. I don't think I would try that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, fair enough. 
And also, another question from the top of my head. Have you ever considered sending mail to Bigfoot? No, never never considered it, no. Because then you need an address, right? Yeah, and you, you never know where Bigfoot is because he never has like a permanent home address or at least a home that he just resides in one place. But he doesn't because he was always going all over the place. So you never know where exactly he is. Hmm. I agree. I agree, Jami. Well, it's great being on the show. It's good seeing you guys. Yeah, yeah it was it's great. great having you back. Yeah, good to have you guys. Thanks for having me. Anytime. Anytime. And until next time, stay tuned for more.